Wow. <clears throat> Good morning. On behalf of our family, we are so thankful that you are here to celebrate the life of our mother. We decided that I would speak because everybody in here knows I am the favorite. <laughs> mom had many names that she was known by. To Julie, Wayne, and myself, we called her mom. To our children, she was Grammy. To Donna, she was sister. To Greg, Jeff, Heather, Pam, Courtney, and Marley. And Charles, she was Audrey. And to most of you here today, she was your friend. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. <clears throat> Our mom had a simple plan love God, serve God, <clears throat> love your family, and love your friends. Mom loved this church for over 50 years. She spent right here. She loved her Sunday school class. She loved the trips that she planned with all her Sunday school classmates. She loved the bus drivers, Mark Rogers, Tommy Graves. When she was with you, we always knew she was in good hands. <clears throat> she loved her work, 30 plus years at the Fett County Tax Assessor's Office. And then after that, I don't know if all of you know this, but she'd ushered at the Fox and she would ride to College Park, park her car at the Martyr Station, and ride the train to the Fox and usher the many shows so that she could watch the different shows. She loved the Fox. Christian City. She started at Christian City when it was just a children's home. She, developed, she devoted a lot of her life to Christian City. She loved spending time with Charles, going out to eat, watching golf, watching the dogs, and just spending time. Charles, you were loved. She loved her family. And I am shaken. <laughs> a lot. <clears throat> In 1990, <clears throat> our father became ill. She never blinked. She never wavered. It wasn't as hard earlier. <clears throat> she taught us about unconditional love, the kind of love that we should always show the ones that we love. No matter what, we don't quit, we don't break. We love because that is what God has commanded us to do. She believed that. She loved us all. Her legacy lives on through her sister, her children, in-laws, grandchildren, great-grands, nieces, and nephews. I think we understand now better what took place a couple of Mondays ago when mom fell and had surgery. This was God's plan. We didn't know at the time, but we do now. She was not afraid of death because she knew exactly what awaited her. One of her favorite songs says, I can only imagine what my eyes will see. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance with you, Jesus, or in awe of you be still? To my family, that day has come. We don't have to wonder anymore. We don't have to imagine. I'm certain when mom strolled across the pearly gates of heaven last Saturday, dad was there to meet her with a big bowl of ice cream and Callie sitting in his lap. Please join us today as we celebrate the life of our mom, our sister, our grandmother, our aunt, and our dear friend, Audrey Bates. Thank you, Johnny. <clears throat> I apologize if my smile is not fitting in this context, but we are celebrating Audrey's life, and she's receiving the reward for which we all hope. And God is good and blessed us with Audrey. And so while this is a bittersweet occasion, bitter for our loss, it is sweet indeed. To the family and friends of Audrey, please know that this little church loves you dearly and supports you fiercely. Not just because of your connection with Audrey, but because almost every one of you have been a part of this church, every one of you in the congregation. And in countless ways, we've been a part of your life. And in your absence, Audrey has kept us updated 
We've prayed for you. We've celebrated with you. We even had the opportunity to ordain Robbie a few years ago. You are family just as much as God's grand church is family. And we're going to do our part to continue the investments that Audrey made among us, and we're going to support our dear friend Charles. I was blessed to be one of Audrey's many preachers, and it was the church that brought us together. And that's the one thing I want to remind you about today as we honor Audrey. She loved, loved, loved the church. And this was her church. Now, not in a negative way, not in a negative ownership way, but rather in a partnership way. Audrey contributed to this church in innumerable ways in this community. I remember speaking to her recently about losing her dear friend, our beloved Nora Blair. And Audrey said, losing Nora was truly a significant loss. Well, I want to tell you that losing Audrey is truly a significant loss. Now, if we had time for an open mic this morning, I'm sure we could all tell some stories. And I could tell you some stories. You know that old saying that the preacher is the last person to know what a person really thinks? That does not apply to Audrey. <laughs> she would tell me what she liked. Not that she demanded her preference, not that she demanded her way, but she would share the things that she really liked. And I discovered along the way that when I followed her lead, it really did bring out the best in others. When she led the choir, she made everyone feel welcome and needed and loved. She liked to have fun, she loved people, and she loved clothes and shoes, which is a whole nother topic. And did she love to sing? She loved to sing. And I think you're going to see Audrey's fingerprints in today's service and the singing. But let me just close with this one thought. I think it is so fitting that we're having Audrey's service in church because she loved the church. She loved the Lord. Jesus was Audrey's Lord and Savior, and now they are together in a way that cannot even be expressed except by calling it perfection. And through the tears, we acknowledge that perfection, that Audrey has received her reward, and we say, thank you, Lord. May the peace of our Lord and Savior comfort you as we see that day approaching. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, we invite your presence among us today as we celebrate Audrey's life and even more as we celebrate you who gives us life. We thank you, Lord, for keeping Audrey in our absence. We thank you, Lord, for the assurance that we have in you. We pray, Lord, that you would bless Audrey's friends and family in her absence, that you would support them, and that you would continue on that great legacy and investment that she has made among us in the days ahead. We pray that your will is done. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Well, if you don't know who I am, I'm Audrey's youngest sister. I'm her only sister, and I'm her only sibling. If you know my sister, you know what we're about to do. We're going to sing like it was one of Audrey's fifth Sunday night singings. We're going to sing some of her favorite songs. She loved music. She loved Christian music. She loved church music. She preferred it to be the old style with the piano and the organ. She liked it loud. I don't play loud because I, I was taught that from her. That's how I come I play so loud. We're going to sing some of her songs, not all of them. My friends, uh, Ray Walker and Melanie Thompson, are going to come and lead us in a medley of some of Audrey's favorite hymns. Oh, victory in Jesus, 
my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. And I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there my song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. Oh, he loved me ere I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his glory is we'll behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we will tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. I'm satisfied with a just a cabbage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one, that silver line. I've got a mansion. Just over the hilltop In that bright land where We'll never grow old And someday wonder We will never go wander But walk on streets that Are pure as gold I've got a mansion Just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. But someday under, we'll never go wander. But walk on streets that are pure as gold. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion and constant friend is he, for his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Oh, his eyes on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because. 
Because I'm free, for his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. It is well, it is well, with my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well, with my soul, when peace like a Sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot, Thou hast taught me to say, It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when thy faith shall be sigh. Oh, the clouds be rolled. As a scroll, the trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul, for it is well. With my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father, for there is no shadow of Changes not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and the peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide, strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, great is friend 
we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. And what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Savior, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee, oh, take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find a solace there. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son. Who yielded his life and atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father. Through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory. Great things he hath done, great things he hath taught us, great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory great things he has done because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because i know And life is worth the living just because he lives. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He bled and to buy my pardon and empty grave is there to prove my savior lives because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone I know he holds the future 
And life is worth the living just because he lives. So I chant the rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. And how great is our God. Oh, sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Oh, sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great. Sings my soul, my Savior God, 
to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and bring me home, what joy shall fill my heart! Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, as we thought about things, you know, you think about what may happen and uh, what plans kind of go on. Donna gave me the directive. Uh, did I say that kindly? Uh, Don Donna told me what was going to happen, and so I uh, said, yes, ma'am. And uh, she said, I want you to just talk about Audrey. And I got to thinking, you know, um, man, this, this is the ending of an era. This, this is a line in the sand, particularly when you talk about Fayetteville Christian Church, you know, our, our final charter member um, from years ago. It, it's, it's a momentous moment to mark this passing. And it's appropriate for us to think about Audrey and, and to think about all the good that she did. I, I came up with a list, uh, if you can see that far. It's full, two pages worth. Um, I'm not going to read them all, Johnny. Uh, jo Johnny, I, I went to visit Audrey last week, was it last week? And, and I was going to stay about five or ten minutes, you know, and about 45 minutes later I left because Johnny was there. And uh, Johnny could talk the horns off a of billy goat. And that's, that's just all there is to it. Let, let me tell you about Audrey. Audrey was. Audrey Melrose Cawthon Bates. I couldn't help but think today as you guys filled these first four rows, look what Bill and our Bell Cawthon have become. Pretty amazing legacy sitting right here in these first four rows. Audrey was a southern gentle woman. She, she epitomized what a true southern lady should look like. Audrey was a caring mom, a, a caring grandmother, caring great-grandmother, an aunt, a sister, a daughter. I'll never forget, we were standing right over here uh, one Sunday morning, and Audrey looked at me and she said, Do you know that Morgan made me great? <laughs> and, it, and it took a minute for me to comprehend that, but Jackson had just been born that week, and uh, she was a great grandmother. She, she was proud, oh my goodness, of all you guys. And it didn't matter whether it was in law or whether it was by blood. She was proud of all of you guys. Audrey was a strong and faithful believer. Her faith showed through, through times of difficulty and through times of challenge, her faith showed. She was a choir director. She was a choir member. She was always involved in music. She was a musician. Audrey was a great friend. Audrey was opinionated, but she was reserved, and she knew how to deliver that opinion without you feeling like you had really, really messed up. Audrey was an example, a charter member, 
She was a great neighbor. I, I can't help but think of Stratford Way and the challenges that are going to be uh, different there because Audrey is no longer there. Audrey was just a lovely lady. She was a tour guide. She was an arranger. She was a director. She was a doer. She was a giver. I, I uh, had a couple of people text me that uh, aren't here today, couldn't, couldn't be here for different reasons, but knew Audrey and particularly knew of her connection to Christian City through the years. And, and her, the statements from a few of them that just you know aren't in this immediate circle per se, they said, uh, I don't know that anyone has ever supported Christian City better than Audrey Bates. She was a giver. She was a civil servant, a public servant. Audrey was particular and precise. Now let me ask you guys who knew her best, did you ever see her hair out of place? <laughs> did you ever see her nails not done? You know, I, I have to maybe surrender my man card here today, but I went one day to a nail shop over here because my feet were hurting and I thought a, a pedicure would feel good, you know? And so I went in and there sat Audrey. And she was like, and I thought, oh great, you know, somebody who knows me is, sees me. But uh, Audrey says, oh, you're gonna love this, come in. And she introduced me by name to all of the Asian ladies sitting within there. And I thought, Audrey is a regular. She, she knows these people. Audrey was benevolent, a generous supporter. She was the daughter of a deputy. I don't know what Bill Cawthon uh, was like. I never had the privilege to meet him, but I, I can't imagine being in Richard's shoes when he first came home to meet Bill Cawthon. I've heard some stories. I, I imagine he was toeing the line. Donna told me a story about when uh, Audrey came home one night and said to her mom and dad and said, uh, I'm going to marry Richard. And, and uh, dad evidently had a piece of fried chicken in his hand and threw it up in the air and said, no, you're not. And Audrey said, it's going to be all right. Audrey was 20 years old. I said, it's going to be all right. You're going to have another son or daughter, and she'll replace me, and she'll live here with you, and, and it'll be just fine. So 20 years later, she, she was uh, taking care of even her sister. Audrey was particular. She always was concerned about how she looked in a good, positive way. I remember one Sunday, Saturday morning, um, it was uh, choir season time at Christmas, and Kevin Adkins was rehearsing the choir that Saturday morning, and I came in because, you know, nothing else to do, I guess, and I, I came walking in, had a big old mug of coffee, and I was disheveled, you know, and, and so that didn't do for Audrey. Audrey said, Dan, why, why do you look so poor? You, you look like you're sick or something. And I said, Audrey, I hadn't been up long. <laughs> and it was like 11, so she, she, didn't, she didn't really understand that fully. Audrey had a standing beauty shop appointment every Saturday. Every Saturday she was going to be there. I, I think every one of us in our own ways, all the stories, as Andrew said, Audrey was a great person. But as I thought about this and as I made this list, I couldn't help but thinking, today is not just about Audrey was. I think we also have to shift a little bit and say Audrey is. That, that's something that we have to focus on as well. Audrey is remembered and loved fiercely. Every one of us will be touched forever because of her influence on our lives. Audrey singing in the heavenly choir, probably directing it. Whoever was there, she probably said, here, scoot over, I got this. <laughs> and, and, and she is there. She's seeing those streets of gold. She, guys, get, get that in your mind. Not just imagining, not, not just dreaming it, but she knows it. She sees it firsthand. Audrey is free from aches and pains and illness and challenges. There's no falling. There's no broken hips. There's no strokes in heaven. Audrey, Audrey is forever in our hearts and minds. Audrey is the legacy that this family is built upon. You, you guys are, are carrying that on. I, I, I remember... One time, uh, Jeff Stubbs and I used to hang out. I, unfortunately, we don't get to 
as much as we used to. And we were riding somewhere, Jeff. I have nowhere, no clue where we were going, probably lunch or something. And you drove down the road right over here, you know, where the old house with the, the little house out in the back. And you said, pointed to the little house, said, that's where Richard and Andre live. And you said, that little house in the back is where we took up housekeeping, me and Julie. And, and you made the comment, you said, they were so good to us. They took care of us, and I know several others lived there, and, and they were good to them. Audrey is that example. Uh, Audrey's with us in our hearts and in our minds. Audrey's walking on the streets of gold. Audrey's better off than ever before. Audrey is consistently worshiping. I can't imagine, you know, ever, ever so often you think about what heaven must be like. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know about you, but it might be a whole lot like that medley just was right you know you, you think about it and you think man I, I don't know if we could constantly worship that that would that I'd be tired I'd be worn out if we had if we'd done Melanie if you'd had two more pages I, I was I was gonna have to go get a drink or something because it, it was just wonderful and Audrey knows that firsthand Audrey epitomizes what I think Proverbs 31 says. Let, let me just read it for you, and, and let me give praise to a virtuous, godly woman named Audrey Bates. A wife of noble character who can find. She's worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her, lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it's still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms and the poor to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gates, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments, and she sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She's clothed with strength and dignity. <laughs> she can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. We gather today to remember, and, and it's appropriate, because worth remembering was Audrey Melrose Cawthon Bates. She was a beautiful soul. And to finalize this, I, I want to tell you, Audrey's in heaven. Audrey's in heaven. She is. And she's waiting on us. I'm going to be there, are you? And grace my 
my fears relieved How precious did that grace appear The hour I first snares I have already come tis grace hath brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures thousand years bright shining as the sun we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we'd first be So honored to be here as we celebrate the life of Audrey and uh, her reunion with our Savior. Um, to me, and I'm sure to, to many of you, Audrey was one of those few people who was just bigger than life. Although she came in a small package, she filled up all the rooms that she was in. And she could be intimidating. When I was out of line, she had no problem straightening me out. And she was tough, and she was also tender. I love how she always introduced me as her grandson. And I'm telling you, if I close my eyes right now, I can still feel her hug and a kiss on my cheek as she was telling me how proud she was of me at Mackenzie's wedding. I'll tell you what, our entire family is so blessed with the legacy that Audrey's passed on. Her children, her grandchildren, great-grandchildren, her nieces, in our home, Morgan carries that legacy, that tender and tough love, and I'm so thankful that uh, she got that from Audrey and passes that on in our house. So I want to pray together, and um, let's join me in prayer, please. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for Audrey. We thank you that we were fortunate enough that you chose to put her into our lives. Lord, we thank you that you got her now. You have her home, and uh, Lord, we just thank you that you provided a way, a way for all of us through sending your son to die for each one of us. You provided a way for each one of us to join you, just like Audrey has. Lord, in the meantime, till we meet again, Lord, I just ask that uh, whenever we think of Audrey, you just help us remember. Help us remember all the fun, funny, sweet, precious, great times that you allowed to have with her. Lord, bring those right to the front of our mind and comfort us. Comfort all of us who are missing her in this meantime until we meet her again. 
Well, we pray all that in Jesus' name. Amen. And we'd like to end this service with the words that we ended so many services together with Audrey sitting right up here in the choir. I'm going to read them. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warmly upon your face. May the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. The family will have a receiving line. Uh, we would love for you to join us in the foyer. Would you be standing as we dismiss the family? <laughs>